Greetings there, baby doll. Close your eyes and then open them again. Pay attention. This chart is the NASDAQ, which is the tech stock index divided by the S&P 500, the broad index. It is a poopy divided by trash. We aren't going to buy these, but you've got to understand why this is going up. One of the most confusing things you're going to see in the traditional finance boomer stock world is the constant wrestling between commentators and analysts who say, valuations are too high. Oh my God, they have to calm down. You will hear them exclaim valuations all the time. What does that mean? When they say the word valuations, what they actually mean is cash flow. What they can't grasp is, why is technology as a stock sector, why does that keep going up when by definition, all of these are meant to be high growth, low cash? High growth, low cash, so they don't make money today. Why? Why does this keep going up? Isn't that nuts? Think about it, you gotta think about this logically. How come since 1986, we went up techs, the tech boom, we came down, how come during the GFC and the zombie virus and everything else, why do we keep going up? They can't get it through their heads. The answer is this. What they don't know is that the meme of investing has changed. Meme of investing. If you've been listening to my videos, if you've been a patient little cookie with your little middens and you've been reading my Twitter, you will understand network effects. Network effects relate to crypto. It also relates to tech. It's the new meme of investing. Money is a meme. Investing is a meme. When these traditional finance stock boomers hear this, their minds explode. They get offended. They think that it's the equivalent of spinning on someone. Why? Because what you're basically saying to them is everything you know about finance that you think you know about investing and money and stocks and your little world, it's wrong. You live in a bubble. They, they, their minds explode. They literally, they cannot accept this in their minds. They believe that everything has to be valued of cash flow. They think if a stock goes up like this, the, the underlying cash flow of the company eventually has to match it. Where do they get this from? This comes from Warren Buffett, Benjamin Graham, all this investing in stocks. That's where it comes from. Then you bring something like crypto out and their minds cannot fathom what's going on. You, we know this chart starts off before this. How does an industry go from 3 billion in size with a B, 3B, to 3,000 B? How does it go to 3 trillion? How is that possible? Uh, they, they can't compute that. Why? Did it make a thousand times more money? Nope. <laughs> no one's making any cash flow in crypto at all, anywhere near what this represents at all. So we are ahead of the game. We are still early. The meme of investing has changed and it's changing now. If you wanna go deeper, you wanna know why, you know the answer. I'm just gonna point it out to you again, all right? You can see in the money supply. The money supply, they keep printing money. And what's happened is as money's been printed, they've patched up all the holes. They patch up with the rich friends, the evil banking scum cartel. They patch up the holes and they enrich their crony friends and the people get poorer. You're an outsider like me, we're not in the club. Okay, so here's a fat, fat, rich rat, um, a fat cat, a rich guy, right, with his little arms, he's stumpy, and there's me and you, we're here together, we're like holding hands, because they're so poor next to each other, all right? We have nothing. Every time they print money, this person's net worth goes up, and ours goes down. What, now, there's been a giant gap. The gap is so wide that we went and we made our own system. Isn't that beautiful? Instead of caving in to the traditional finance system, which is to go and play NASDAQ and S&P 500, some very smart people, some very loyal people, you got Satoshi, you got Vitalik, you got every other founder and crypto leader who isn't a grifter, all of them have decided to join the new better system because they can see it for what it is. So the NASDAQ, Breaking away from the S&P just constantly, th this is blowing everyone's mind because they keep saying valuations are too high. They raised rates in 2022 at the fastest speed ever. 
they did it in such an aggressive way, you would think by now the stock market would be like 50% lower and all these non-cash producing stocks and companies should be much lower. How do you explain that? They, they can't explain it. They go, this makes no sense. How have we blown everything to pieces yet traditional banks are breaking apart faster than tech companies? With the recent crisis of Silver Bank, Silvergate, all the other poopy heads, the evil banking cartel scum banks, they broke faster? Get that through your mind. How does that work? They make money. They actually make cash. And they disintegrated. They melted. <laughs> they had explosions before dog coins in crypto and before these other tech companies. Question marks everywhere. People don't know why. They don't know why. This is, I love seeing this, by the way. When there's question marks everywhere, I'm like, oh, thank you, because we know the answer. We know the answer, friends. We're in crypto. You know, this chart, it tells you everything you need to know. This chart's gone up a thousand X, and you know it's gone up more. Three billion or three trillion, okay? So all of these, what are you gonna do now, all right? What are you gonna do? Are you going to participate in the old system, or are you gonna come and party with the new system? The new system's better. We're in the new system. All these traditional finance commentators, they are scratching their heads so many times. They, have, they, can't, they can't explain this chart. They don't know investing's a meme. You do now. You do. See, if you go back to that the fat cat picture, right? These fat, you know, these are fat cat. They are, think of these people in the stock market here. Think of those people here. They think it's all about cash flow, right? And yes, the meme of stocks is cash flow. That's the meme. It is just a meme. So I can ask you this. Is there a difference? between a company if you're trading at a PE ratio of three versus 30, there's a 10x difference in price. Is there a difference? No, there isn't. The company still operates. You could be a pizza shop, right? You know your pizza shop? Let's say you make $100,000 a year. If I made a stock for you and your stock is trading at a market cap of $300,000 versus three million, does that change anything about your pizza shop? You still make pizza. You still wear middens to work every day for the hot stove. It doesn't change anything. In the stock market, they don't see it like that. They say, oh, well, dude, like um, in the theoretical world, someone can come in with voting rights and they can go get a new CEO and they can buy back the stock and they can buy out the company. This is all a load of baloney. People who talk like that, have very slanted, crooked backs. They are non-straight back friends. Non-straight backs. So when they talk like this, these are like imaginary stuff. When's the last time you heard of all these people with all these sick big wallets coming out and just buying out all these companies and changing the CEO and changing all these biz baz? It's not relevant to 99% of us. 99% of us, right, are baby dolls who are outsiders. We don't have enough money to impact McDonald's's menu. We don't have enough menu, money to change the logo of Uber. We don't have enough money to like, you know, be Elon Musk's friend. We don't have enough. And we, most of us never will. We are the outsiders. There's more of us than of them. So now this system makes sense. The crypto system is growing up. That's why we're still so early. They can't wrap their minds. We're not even making any cash flow. But as I explained it before, we are in one big house, okay? We're in one big house, friends, and crypto is all about network effects. Here's your cute house. There are one million people in this house. And as I say, you have a megaphone. Me and you, we're standing outside the house. We can shill, we can market, we can sell promote any product to anybody in this house and everyone at the same time. They're all in one place. The market gives this value. That's what a network effect is. Why? Because the cost of information travel is so slow. It's so low. It's nothing. It's a hyper competitive space. That's why it's really important you take this seriously and you try to go as aggressive as you can because we are a low hanging fruit friends. We are. The cost of information travel is very, very low. It's zero. 
Okay, so you got to eat this low-hanging fruit. You have to grab it, friends. You see that? You have to be nibbling away. If you don't nibble away at it, someone else is going to nibble away at it. And you get what does that translate to? That translates to diminished returns somewhere. Okay? Diminished returns. It's going to be harder to figure out the next big winner. So this low-hanging fruit, it's going to get eaten up. People are slowly figuring out that this stock market game, something's not making sense here. They don't actually realize it's a meme. We do. The meme of investing. Remember my example with your cute little pizza shop. Whether a stock trades at three or 30, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. There are some theoretical examples. Yeah, they can change up. But for the, we and you don't care. We are here for the price go up. Everyone's here for the price go up. In the stock market, they cannot accept this. We are ahead of them. They still haven't woken up to the fact that 99% of people are in the stock market just because of price go up. You know, it's funny. You're in crypto with me. To us, this is second nature because we know we're all DGENs and we do the memes and we all feel sad when there's a red candle. And then when there's one green candle, we're like, we are so back, baby. We're on that roller coaster together. You know, in stocks, they don't talk like us. Go, go listen. If you ever have a chance, listen to how they talk in traditional finance. They talk like they have their head stuck up their rectum. They say things like, yeah, I want to own great American businesses, dude. Yeah, this company is providing utilities to the West Coast of this. They actually speak like that. They think they're like some grand image, grand, uh, like, look at me, I'm providing all this utility to the East Coast of this nation. They actually speak like that. I know it sounds funny. I'm not memeing it. Go listen to them, right? But they talk about that. They talk about the makeup of their CEOs and what they're doing and the image and all this, all this junk irrelevant to the price go up. So what, what they're actually doing is, okay, they haven't realized themselves that they're just there for the price go up. What they think is, they think that if they fall in love with a company, the price going up is a side effect. Naturally, you, th good things come to those who do good stuff. You know that karma principle? That's what they actually believe. And that's a load of baloney. It was interesting. There are many examples in the stock market that prove this wrong, but... The, the, the meme of investing is so entrenched, nobody will ever dare to break away from it. I can show you Tesla, you know? So many hyper-growth stocks that have still not gone to zero are absolutely blowing all these other things away. I've even made a video and I've shown you tweets where if you look at the ratio between utility companies and the S&P 500, it's been going down for like 40 years. Explain that. How is companies that produce electricity and energy for the whole nation, why is their value losing to everything else? You know, without the food and electricity and all this stuff, you're, everyone goes to zero. <laughs> Our lives go to zero. We literally, everyone passes away. See, investing is a meme. Allocating capital. Crypto is the cool new meme. We have one million people in the house here and we understand that this has value. People in the stock market, they don't see any value to this, right? Because they don't value what we value, right? We value memes. We will see a picture of a dog and go, you know what? $100 wouldn't hurt anybody, would it? You know, it's got a cute little doggy. What do you want me to do? We actually think like that, okay? In, in the traditional finance world, they dis they're disgusted at that. Yeah, yeah. They go, ah, oh, this is disgusting. I'm allocating capital to this traditional banking system that's helping poor people in this part of the country. Yeah? Ask them, would they still feel so happy if the price went down 90%? Right? And they'll say like, no, of course not. And you go, okay, well, you're actually there for the price go up. And they say, no, 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 no. I'm not there for the price go up. I'm there because I want to own good American businesses that make money, etc. And then as a natural side effect, that's how they speak. That's how they, they don't know what they're talking about. Okay, They don't know what they're talking about. They don't even know themselves. But we understand the game. But I'm going to warn you right now. One day, the meme will change, friends. One day we're not going to be so early, okay? And don't you forget that. One day, the stock market people are going to wake up like Neo in the Matrix and they're actually going to come for our bags and they start going to understand network effects, Metcalf's law. They're going to understand who's got the biggest communities, where are their on-ramp and off-ramps, what are they building? 
They can see the numbers on Etherscan. They can get proper measurements for the daily active users. They can compare Ethereum to Cardano. They can get proper measurements of exchanges and DEXs, and they can make their own models and put quantitative numbers. And unfortunately, when that happens, our fair value starts to get known, right? So instead of going, whoa, instead of doing that, that's opportunity for me. Instead of doing that, They'll barely buy it up above a 2 or 3x and then come back down 30%, maybe up 50%. Unfo that's it, you know. By the way, it'll be much smaller than that. It'll look like this. That is unfortunate, right? That's what the stock market eventually does. You don't believe me? I'll show you what the stock market does because I'm seeing you there. You don't believe? I know what I'm talking about. I'm going to show you right now. You want to see these stonks? This is what your life is going to be, friends, on a monthly chart. We're here. You think, oh, wow, that's great. Up only. Hello? Hello, up only. Uh, by the way, this is the greatest bull run in history. Wow. Did you enjoy your 188% in 12 years? Yes, I did, sir. Thank you. This is, this is unfortunately, this is what the end game is. But it's not too late. You have to allocate aggressively while the normies have not woken up yet. Okay. So, you know the coins I like. It's not, it doesn't take a genius to figure it out. You have to pay attention or you're going to miss out, okay? We're running out of euphoria waves. That's what I think is happening. Now, I hope the trend gets bucked. I hope crypto really goes parabolic somewhere. Something happens. Someone makes new inventions. I hope that, but we can't rely on that. So at the end of the day, you still have the ultra late adopters to always rely on <laughs> if we're ever super trapped, friends, and that is the stock market boomers. So ultimately, the decision is yours. Are you going to look at crypto as a way for you to make money for the real world? Or are you going to follow what the people who are winning doing? And what they do is they see everything in the real world as a distraction from this. Okay. And I'm not even have to make this up. I mean, look at this. Hello. 1000x. 1000x. In an entire market cap of the asset class. How many more do we have to go? That's what I love. The fact that we ask, oh my God, how much more do we have to go? And it's so like up in the air. Because in the stock market, you can't talk like that. In the stock market, the game is so fudged. The Ponzi system, keep, they just keep printing money and saving the system. There is no edge. There are no capitulations and, and explosions. Maybe society is kind of better off because you don't want a minus 90% collapse every 10 years in the stock market. But hey, while this game is unregulated and it's wild, wild west, we're going to take advantage, friends. You tell your mum you love her, I'll catch you next time.